Good evening to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope that it is well with you tonight and that the peace that overcomes all knowledge overwhelms you in this moment. I am Marta Peters and tonight I will be continuing Roberta's Ended Last Night. The part that, that, sh that comes forth in the Kollach is John 12 verse 2 to 8 and you are more than welcome to read along with me as I read. But let us first unite in prayer. Lord, we see this as a privilege to be able to come as followers in Christ in your name. On the sixth day before your son was crucified, to share in his remembrance of his resurrection. And even though we cannot see one, one another, we know that we are connected through an unbreakable bond to you. And because of this, to each other as well. Thank you that you are using this time to enrich our to enrich our relationship with you and our adoration for one another. Thank you for the technology that enables us to communicate with one another. May your name be glorified through this and through every word that goes out tonight. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Jesus and his disciples were invited to a house for a feast. Lazarus was there and Martha was, help, was helping to serve while the others ate. Their sister Maria had came and she anointed Jesus' feet with very expensive oils. Then she dried off Jesus' feet with her hair. The aroma of perfume filled the entire home. Judas Iscariot said, Lord, this oil has been wasted. We could have used it to sell it and then use the money to give to the poor. Not that he really cared about the poor. But he was appointed to watch over the money of the disciples, and he stole from it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She has anointed my feet with oil for my funeral. The poor you will always have. But for me, you won't always have. This story plays off six days before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus went to a specific circle of friends in, Beth in Bethania where I believe his heart had found rest. I also believe that this was a farewell to his friends, friends he loved dearly and friends from he would be taken away from very soon. He came to encourage them with words especially with the day when, when everyone would, would come to close together and thought. Jesus, uh, Jesus very well goes away from his nation for a while, but he indicated that he goes in love and not in anger. We see, we see that three names are mentioned in one family, namely Martha, Lazarus and Maria. I think we find in this family a type of true leftovers from Israel. First, there was Martha with a servant's heart. She served the master with the greatest respect, and even though she was a seen woman, she didn't think it was beneath her to serve others. Yes, Jesus, Jesus did correct and she did correct Martha a few times, but not as but she did not as Maria came to sit at his feet. And even though Jesus did did speak to her, Martha didn't stop serving. No. Martha kept serving, but not on a distance as before, but close to God so that through the mercy of God she may hear his words. Almost like the Queen of Skeba said, 
to the servants of of Solomon, it is better to be a servant at the table of Christ rather than to be a guest at the table of a prince. Martha with Martha had an unshakable faith and an extraordinary love that connected her to Jesus. Second, second there was Lazarus. Lazarus was The fact that Lazarus sat at the table was a testimony of the great power that Jesus had used to resurrect him. I read from Acts 10 verse 40 to 41. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him. After he arose from the dead. After the resurrection of Lazarus, he did not live apart like a hermit. No, instead, when there were gatherings of family and friends, he was the testimony of the wonder works of Christ. Lazarus lived through this powerful um, power that resurrected him from the dead. The same power that will call to the martyrs from the grave one day. The third person that was mentioned is also the representative of a different class in their midst. Maria. Maria, who drank from the fountain of the truth, and through these living waters that came through her heart, she received them. She also understood that there was something more as the hope and the blessing of Israel, namely Jesus himself. When Maria anointed Jesus' feet, she honors Jesus in a very special way. The amount of oil she used is out of the ordinary a lot. We read in verse 3 that it was a pint of pure nard. This is a very expensive oil. It's made from the root from the nard plant which grows in India, which is why it was so expensive. I have wondered why Maria had used her hair instead of a towel to dry the feet of Jesus. Women in those days When they were attracted to a man, she went to lie at his feet and used her hair as a towel to dry his feet. Their hair was a very great part of them as being women, and which is why they they cared with their hair with extraordinary caution and care. Through a woman who who comes to the feet of a man and uses her hair as to to dry their feet, it means that she wants to give the man her best. So Maria showered her faith onto the body of Christ, the body that was on the brink of being given over to be mutilated so that we might receive, um, so that we might be redeemed and might receive freedom from our sins. This sort of faith that is drenched with the love of God and with the acceptance of Christ it spreads a sweet aroma in the in the entire home. Jesus understood Maria, and this is all what he wanted. He justifies her by declaring that she is doing this in preparation for his funeral, words that no one can stand against. Isn't this the same adoration we should have to Christ? In John 19, verse 39 and 40, we least we read that Nicodemus had a mixture had a mixture of mirror and aloe, and with this mixture with accompanied with different spices, this was laid in the grave with Jesus' body. Maria stands in a strong contrast with Nicodemus just through the fact that she anointed Jesus while he was still alive. She gave so much ointment and oil in such a great love and adoration for Jesus in a total acceptance and and faith in Jesus Christ. 
In verse 4 and 5 we read that Judas made a comment against this action of Miriam. He would have preferred that the money would have gone to the poor. In those times, a rabbi, one of a rabbi's disciples took um, the, the responsibility to look after the money. Judas was the one who took responsibility for the finances. And therefore, he had the right to voice his opinion as how the money was spent. And John makes it clear in verse 6 that Judas was a thief that wanted to use the money for, for himself, for his own reasons. So, so Judas uses a figurative wall or a front where he uses to make his disapproval known that the money could have been used for something else. Judas, Judas tried to suppress his, his unpure methods for this money. Judas wasn't loyal towards, um, in his heart, wasn't loyal towards Jesus and the other disciples. I believe that this money was placed in Judas in Judas's hands to act as a, as a catch to, to point out his disloyalty, and at many times we are the same. We we are tempted by sins from the outside, but we have no reason to love or to trust the so-called money we are entrusted with with in this life actually we are only stewards of of these things that god gives us judas was a sin sick steward The privilege of the evil destroys them. This is a very um, common saying. We hear that we hear Jesus' words when he says to to her to Mar says to Judas from of Maria, let her be. We can see that Jesus is caring towards his children and towards Maria as well. We also see that. Um, that Jesus binds himself with Maria through his dead um, through through his crucifixion. In verse eight we see that Jesus answers Judas against uh, against his opinion. In Deuteronomy five fifteen verse eleven um, we also read that Jesus is always be with us. Now I ask you the question, how can we make this applicable to our own life? Let's look shortly to the character to the characteristics of each character in this story. And let us take and let us take this for our say for ourselves. Because everything that is beautiful and honorable is something that comes from Christ. But we should also let ourselves be warned from the Holy Spirit against things that are that are not honorable and are not, not beautiful. Martha took the greatest um, res respect to serve at the table of Christ, her her master. Let us see that that any form of a servant's heart is not is not something that to be to. F that we have to be feel is dishonorable because we are doing it for Christ. And Matthew 10 verse 42 stands, anyone anyone who gives one of these small ones a cold glass of water and let them drink of this may, because he is a disciple, Beware, I say to you, he shall receive, he, his, he shall re receive as well. Let us go out as, 
as witnesses for Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 5 and 6 says, um, Also out of the dead, also we were dead in, in our trespasses, um, and we were made alive through through Christ, and out of out of grace and mercy we we were saved. Maria Maria's action of love <laughs> towards her master was a great was a great testimony testimony of love. May our homes be filled with the beautiful aromas and identity of Christ. And may the, the sweet aromas of the Holy Spirit fill, 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 our, fill our hearts and that His name may be glorified. In Judas's reaction, I see a warning for us as children of Christ. Judas's love of money caused him to be disloyal towards his master and his fellow people of his nations. Judas creates the impression that he stands in a relationship with Jesus, but in reality, it is a false impression. He was an apostle, a preacher, someone who, who spread the who spread the gospel but he judged Maria's actions toward Jesus Recog recognize his his the cold front he had the cold front he had um, towards Maria the Lord tells us to to be careful of of a, of a cold heart And not to, to, to be a to not to, um, to be a two sided, to be someone in front of the public and to be someone different in your heart. Maria had unshakable faith in her Savior. In verse eight, we read, "But I, you do not, you will not have always." We will see Jesus again one day, but we are privileged enough now to live to live with His Holy Spirit. To me, it is a joy. We need wisdom to know precisely when responsibility comes in our lives and when it comes between us and the relationship of Jesus Christ. This attack on our relationship with God will always be there, but we can trust in the Holy Spirit to guide us in the way in which He has called us. Ephesians 5, 15 and 14 um, puts us very clear to us in words that we should be act in wise and that we should make due with the time that we have because the time is little. Dear ones, let us allow the Holy Spirit to give the, the beautiful characteristics of Martha and Maria to testify these beautiful characteristics in our own life. May our love represent a, a Maria love in our heart for Jesus. Our assurance lives in in the promises in the word in Romans 8 in in Romans 8 in Romans 8 verse 25 to to 27 and verse 27 says he who who looks through the hearts does this in the will of God and he steps in for the holy ones. May our heavenly father 
bless each and every one of us in a different and unique way in the time that lies ahead of us in this time when we feel when we celebrate the crucifixion of jesus amen it was a pleasure for me to spend this special time with you today thank you that that you did that that you did from your part to connect with us on on this technological scale and may our father bind us all in spirit in an unbinding um, brother brotherhood and love tomorrow morning during the nine o'clock service in Yatnil, we'll be continuing um we'll be continuing on the fifth day before the crucifixion of jesus and tomorrow night there will be no there will be no presentation let's close in prayer father our heavenly lovingly father Thank you that we may call you rightly so because we have become your children through the blood that has shed for us on that cross. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the for the burden that you carried for us. Thank you that your love understands us and carries us and we accept you with open arms and we welcome the unspeakable joy and freedom in our hearts. May the mercy of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you through this unknown night. Amen. I greet you in the words of 3 John 1 verse 14 and 15. But I hope to see you again and we shall speak from mouth to mouth. Peace for you. The friendly, the friends greet you. Friendly greetings by the name. Good night and have a wonderful rest for each and every one of you. King of kings and